Hi everyone, today I want to show you how uh, to create a floral crown that will be sitting in the background and have the face come into the foreground. So in the last video I showed you how to create a floral crown coming into the foreground and pushing the face into the background. But today this is what we're going to be looking at. So we're going to try and create a crown. Now this might not be uh, the best example because it's sort of overlaying but today I will show you how to not have the overlay of the lines because this is the black ink that I used. We are going to for the next one. In fact for the next one you could do uh, you could go in straight with the black ink but I still prefer to start with a, a light colored ink. So what we're going to do is we're going to use all three sizes of the roses that I have in my <clears throat> in my stamp set. So here they are. We have this rose, which is the largest one, the medium one, and then you have the small one. There's also a rosebud, which technically makes it four rose elements in the in one set. And uh, never mind all the other ones. It's, it's filled with flowers and uh, there are 22 of them. So it's filled with goodies. Um, now, the thing is, when you're looking at this crown, you actually will realize the size difference. And I was working with my manufacturer um, going back and forth and I decided I wanted to enlarge the size. So here, actually, they are from like a previous edition, which I felt they are a little bit too small and I wanted it to be larger. So I increased the size and now we have this beautiful um, size flower. So this is the size that it was at. So the largest one was like that and now it's this size. So it really gives you a nice area to play with your watercolor and have fun. So let's do that today. And I will show you what you need to do for that. So we're gonna um, start by uh, stamping the face. So first of all, I'm going to protect my um, journal. All the information is below. So if you wonder what inks I'm using or what other um, art supplies, then have a look down below. So this is uh, Tim Holtz Distress Ink in Tattered Rose. So I'm just gonna um, start quite simple and stamp a face. Now, what I recommend doing for this style is I need to find my mask, which is probably somewhere here. Oh, here it is, I found it. Okay, so I like to keep it at the back in, inside here, like like this, for example, um, and keep it that way. But I think, honestly, what I may do is just cut out a bunch of um, masks and just keep them like in an envelope or something. But for now, this works quite well. So I cut out a mask and that means I done the same thing as I've done here, just on a cheapy kind of, um, you know, this type of, what's it called? Like a posted uh, note paper, just a really thin one, and then I cut it out, and now I'm placing it on top of the face, making sure it covers the lines nicely, and I'm going to use washi tape on the opposite end of where I want to work. So if I'm wanting to work here, I'm going to place the washi tape over there. So next thing we're going to do is I'm going to actually I use some of these flowers from the previous time and I haven't tidied them up which is so unlike me and I'm going to grab the three roses and just in case I feel like adding the rose but I'm going to do that too. Why not? So we're just doing the roses today we're not doing any foliage but you can totally Go wild and embellish as much or as little as you want. That's the beauty. You pick how you like things. Do you like the more kind of um, simple or do you like the more complicated? And that's what you do. I don't know which way that is. Doesn't really matter. 
and then this one goes there where's my hydrangea flower sitting here okay so now that I tidied everything up I am going to set these aside so you can see at the back here I've got a few masks so I'm going to grab those I recommend cutting up to three masks okay so I've got some masks here now to to begin with I don't really need them straight away I will need them after I do the first one so let me just do this uh, I'm going to start with the largest one I like to use the largest first and I'm going to put it in the middle like it will be our center rows you can put it slightly off center or right in the center depending how you like it but I am basically going to do it slightly off center and it's going there so it has overlapped now watch this when I'm lifting you can see there is a rose but it's sort of behind it um, you can move it out more or move it in closer whichever you prefer again depends on the look you're going for so this is one rose second I need my mask now so I'm going to take the sticky off place place the mask and now I'm going to take the middle sized rose which is this one and to avoid confusion what I'll try to do is go kind of one direction clockwise and then anti-clockwise and so I'm going to stamp second one and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp like maybe one more and this time I need the mask for this little one and let's see so this is I think like that and then back into the ink and I'm going to overlap it quite a bit and I'm going to try and change the rows so that it doesn't look exactly identical like that and now I'm going to try and find the right angle for this rose which is I think this one and now I'm going to go for the smallest rose I hope you're following <laughs> it's actually not that confusing at all it's quite easy to do and now I'm just going to stamp the small rows and stamp it again just so it's not overlapping but just have a couple of leaves this time or petals rather showing off all right so the next one we're going to go back into the medium sized rows and I'm going to go in and again rotate it slightly and now I will go straight into the small one so that I don't have this you know symmetry of one two two I want it to be a little bit more organic looking so I'm going to go into the small one and again find the mask for this one and I think yeah so then stick that one there and I think that should be it so to check whether you're happy or not just lift it back hmm maybe I want one more actually there so then I'm going to put just the very little edges here like I've done on the other one as well. So now it kind of looks better, it kind of dies into nothing. So now I'm going to lift all of that and reveal this beautiful crown. Now what you need to do is to really relax. You need to do this when it's nice and quiet and chilled. Um, if you have chil children running around this might not be the best thing to do so you need to be very very relaxed and um, concentrate on this bit because we're having a lot of petals here that are overlapping and so what you should do is start with the biggest rows then do 
the the same um, order that you have done the stamping so you're going to go clockwise you're going to do the next rows the one after the one after so that it makes sense once you finish with this rows you know where this row starts and finishes then you know what the next one is starting and finishing because at the moment when you're looking it's too much going on if you break it down like that it actually will be quite easy so i'm going to start with the face first and i'm going to uh, line out so i'm using a waterproof ink because I might be using watercolors afterwards. I'm not doing it today. I'm just showing you how to do this. And then, like I said, I would start with the biggest rows and just line out all these beautiful petals. And after you've done that, you can then move on to the next one, like that. So the next one is sitting on the right of it. Don't worry if you uh, miss a part of the line or don't line it out exactly. I have designed them so that you can have fun with it so there you go you can see this was fairly easy nothing too complicated as long as you keep it to the rows and do one row at a time don't sort of start on the next rows before you finish the previous one if that makes sense nice and easy and this is so relaxing all you can think about is just following these lines in fact uh, what I'm going to do next time I'm traveling is um, I will stamp loads and loads of these, give myself different looks, different variations, and then I would just, you know, line them out when you're in the airport, sitting and waiting, or when you're on the plane. You can just start doing your line work. And then if you have like PLS maybe or a tiny little watercolor palette like so, you can totally take it with you on the airplane and, and use it with a water brush. Okay, so then here when the rose is very small because it's only very little part of it, don't worry too much, just kind of go with it where it makes sense because you know, there's just little bits of it, so you don't really have to um, think which part of the rose is it. Just do it um, as much as you can see, and then later you can just add a little bit of watercolor, and you will know that it's a rose because it is connected to this beautiful little rose crown. And so, let's have a look at the one we've done here. So, here I have uh, taken the roses further out. And you can see the center of the roses, so you can make a bigger, kind of wider looking crown. Or you can tuck them in a little bit further and um, have this look as well. So it's really, again, up to you to play around and find what works best. But that is it. What I could do also is add some... Yeah, maybe I'll just add this one rose bud here. I kind of feel like it. I'm just going to add the rose bat just to create a little bit more um, of this. Let's see, I'm trying to look over it so that I don't... There we go, that sits quite nicely here. And I could if I wanted to create a couple more, but I don't know, do I need to? Why not actually? I quite like this rose bud. So I'm going to do one more here. And one more there. That's it. Okay, now I feel like I lost the volume here again. 
and I might want to add more so <laughs> this is the beauty with this that you can just play forever and just create whatever you feel like you might start with one idea and then get a few more while you're working on this so let's do this one just to add a little bit more of the volume here so in fact from this point I don't want this end of the leaves and I'm going to make it shorter and just wipe it like that with your finger and then over here I'm just going to connect it there we go so if it looks a little bit overlapped again don't worry we can correct that later on and then would that be enough or do we want something else here let's see maybe like a little one yeah that would be pretty okay I want the little one are you yet screaming on the other side of the screen stop stop I wonder this is so much fun though okay so now I could if I really wanted to be careful put those masks back on but I don't really mind I think it looks it looks quite cute so then oh now at this point I do want this little bit because I'm going to connect it like so there we go now this this looks good to me so I'm going to go ahead again and line everything out and you will see that we now have created a much much uh, more substantial floral crown and it is up to you how big how complicated you make it as long as you have fun that's what matters so now with the rose in here and there okay so then I'm going to overlap it on the other leaf so here with the leaves we need to kind of work a little bit so what I want to do is this leaf is quite big so I want to I'm actually going to start with this one so I'm going to start here and I'm going to line out the first leaf that I stamped because I want it to be in the foreground now this leaf I'm going to connect to the leaf I just drew out and then we're going to tuck it behind like so so I'm not obviously overlaying the lines so if I show you up close you can see I'm ignoring this this here this line and keeping it like that and then same thing here we're going to connect this leaf and then I think it looks really pretty when things are overlapping and then we're going to also do this leaf right here and making sure everything is connected nicely nothing is swinging in the air or floating to make it look a little bit prettier just add a little detail just here and there by thickening a few areas and look at that now so then I'm going to do this rosebud here. You can exaggerate some of the lines as you go. I think it's Halloween tonight. Are you into Halloween? I'm not. And luckily my son isn't. He doesn't like anything scary. So I'm happy. Um we don't have to to uh, knock on the doors and uh, see some pretty scary masks and whatnot but maybe when he gets a bit bigger we can do the trick-or-treat or whatever it's called 
I've never done it in my entire life actually. Okay, so here we go. <clears throat> Okay, so here is the crown. We started off quite simply from looking like this, which you can completely leave at that, or you can build on and create more. So here is the one we've done in the previous video where the crown is sitting above, and that means you um, kind of using the forehead area for it. Here you can still create a fringe and have fringe and a floral crown, if that makes sense. And that way you have a lot going on here. And yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and doodle. I find doodling so relaxing and therapeutic that I could just sit here and doodle for hours. Oh, in fact, I need to go get my son soon. Still have about half an hour. Which means it's very, like, it's a good time. Half an hour is a good time to create a face like this from start to finish. Oh, obviously depends how much detail you're putting into it. But otherwise, I find if you just have half an hour time, you can do quite a bit because obviously stamping takes the drawing time to a minimum because you're just stamping. So there you go, a little crooked um, fringe, but it will do. <laughs> All right, so basically this is what I've done now. When I have a bit of time later on, I can just go back into it, create the face, same thing here and then do some water coloring as well, maybe on another session. And that is how I like to use these beautiful stamp sets. Have I actually shown them today? I don't think I did. Anyways, I'll keep these, which are completely brand new. Uh, so I keep them here to show you. So this is what they look like, face of the day. And then the florals which you can use on their own as well to create floral clusters. There is a tutorial you can check out on my channel or you can use them together like so. I hope you enjoy this tutorial and thanks for watching and see you soon.